In this video, we are going to solve an equation taken from the IMO long list 1985. For positive integers x, y, and z, 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z equals 4 over 5. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. We notice that this, the left-hand side of the equation is symmetric, as in, the equation will still look the same, no matter how I arrange the order of x, y, and z. So I can just freely assume um, the size in decreasing order, so that after solving it, I can just list out all solutions by permuting the numbers. So I can say that by symmetry, I'd go for x to be the smallest one, so it's now becoming by ascending order. x is the smallest, y is the second smallest, and then z is the largest number. Then, if we take the reciprocal, then the fractions would then follow a descending order instead. 1 over x is the largest, 1 over z is the smallest. Then the sum of these three fractions must be, at most, 3 over x, as in each of these fractions is smaller than 1 over x. So that means 4 fifths is less than or equal to 3 over x, and so eventually we will have x is less than or equal to 15 over 4, and this number is actually 3.75. So that means our smallest number, to not have any choices, is either 1, 2, or 3. But of course we can't have x equals 1, because if we put it into the equation, then 1 over 1 plus some 2 positive fractions equals 4 fifths, but that is impossible because 1 itself is larger than 4 fifths. So that means we have two cases left, which are x equals 2 or x equals 3. And we're going to solve them, solve them one by one. For the first case, we put it into the, in the equation. And we'll have 1 over y plus 1 over z equals 3 over 10. We can put the fractions and left together and cross multiply. So we have 3yz equals 10y plus 10z. And I'm going to move to the other side. And I'm going to factorize it. To make it factorizable, and the coefficients of y and z are equal, so to follow the symmetry, I'm going to multiply both equations by 3. And then I'm going to add 100, so that the left-hand side can be factorized with all coefficients to be integers. And besides, as you can see, this equation is still symmetric. Then because we have three y, uh, we have y and z to be both positive, so we know that we can't have um, both numbers to be negative. As if y, both y and z are negative, then it's actually, I mean, if y, three y minus ten and three z minus ten are both negative, then it's impossible to to solve for a valid solution, so I'll just skip that. Now I'll focus on the positive uh, factors of 100, and because I've assumed that y is a smaller number when comparing with z, so I'm just going to put uh, 3y minus 10 to be equal to some smaller factors of 100, which are 1, 2, 4, 5, and 10. We stop at the square root of 10. While for the solutions for z, it can be 3z minus 10 can be 
hundred, fifty, twenty-five, twenty, and ten, corresponding to、uh, the factors above, so that the product will be a hundred. Then solving, you realize that only these two numbers for y will give a valid solutions, which means y is an integer. So solving. Y equals four, and then or y equals five. For y equals four, which is three、uh, set minus ten equals fifty, we have set equals twenty. While for y equals five, then three set minus ten is twenty, so that set equals ten. So now we have two sets of solutions, exclude excluding the permutations. So that's the first case. Now move on to the second case, which is similar to what we have been doing when x equals two. When x equals three, then similarly we can say the sum of one over y and one over z equals four fifths minus one third, and that is seven over fifteen. And doing similar steps, and moving things to one side, multiplying both sides by seven, and adding two hundred and twenty-five on both sides, so that left hand side will be can be、uh, factorized. With all coefficients to be integers, and and the factorized form is still symmetric. Now again, as we have assumed that y is a small number, so we can take smaller factors for of two two five for seven one minus fifteen, which is. Uh, which are one, three, five, nine, and fifteen, and we can write corresponding solutions for seven set minus fifteen. But in fact, if you check one by one, you'll realize that there is no solution. So that means, therefore, our final solutions are just two pairs: two, four, twenty, two, five, ten. Of course, with its and its permutations, I would say, and its permutations. Of course, we can do some checking, which is that a half plus a one one quarter plus one over twenty equals、uh, three quarters plus one over twenty, and that is indeed four over five, or you can write as sixteen over twenty first, which is four fifths. One over a half plus one fifth plus one tenth is equal to. Uh, five plus two plus one, which is eight over ten, and that is also four over five. So, these solutions are indeed valid, and this is our final answer.